Hey, so I'm just doing this video to kind of go over a little bit about what's been going on with me in my life. So I've been a little depressed for the last couple of weeks and I don't want to get too into it, but let's just say in more ways than one, um, life has given me some heaviness to deal with and that's hard. And one of the things that I did when I worked with the Olympian spirit Aratron yesterday was I asked that the feeling of the weightiness would go away. So not necessarily to like get rid of all my problems because you're only good. You, human beings are pretty good problem finders and we get bored if we don't have a problem to kind of work on. But I didn't like the way it was feeling like it was crushing me. So Eritron, she was very nice and she did that. By the way, just my experience in working with those Olympian spirits, they do tend to just be, if you're of the night sect, moons, Venus, and Saturn, those presented to me as female and the, uh, the rest the, the day sect, the sun, Mars, and Jupiter, those tended to be male. And then Mercury, of course, goes either way. Anyway, so she did that. And I noticed today, it was like, okay, my consciousness is this. What's going on? Why am I feeling relatively low still? And one of the things that the spirit... And by the way, one of the initial things is like, well this is a new system you're working with and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I mean, so maybe these aren't like the things to deal with. And that's always a good question to ask, by the way. I'm sort of giving a snarky edge to my voice, but that's an important and valid question to ask. And so I thought about it and it's like, well, okay, but let me just see, you know, let me just try. So, and... Really, I found that I've just still been working through a lot of a lot of really heavy grief. Um, one of the things that happened was uh, we lost uh, our cat, and this was a cat that was kind of my cat, and it was relatively sudden, and a whole lot about it wasn't great, you know, specifically the events leading up to it, and. Um, and some of the aftermath. And the things that also happened in the, in the aftermath that were, should have been completely unrelated, but weren't. And were very hurtful. So, so anyway, these are things that can happen to you at any point in your journey. And the usual things that I do for myself is I do what I can, right? I let myself muddle through. And I think that word muddle is one of the most underrated words in the English language. You don't know, well, let's muddle through, right? So that's what I've been doing. And it's been hard, it's been very heavy and I think for me, the importance is sometimes in that heaviness, you, you lose your regular practice, which is fine. Um, take care of you, right? Um, don't go blowing your life up, etc. right? Because I've done that before. Um, but take care of you. Even if there are pressures on you and there have been a lot of pressures on me, both everything I've described and beyond that in a major way, in major ways, plural. Um, sometimes you just need to focus on you. So I mention all of this to say that it's very easy to take the point of view is it must be, you know, the spirits that I'm working with or whatever. Um, and although that's possible, it's unlikely. 
I mean, let's just face it. Uh, if you don't have your own self together, you know, you know, there, there's that phrase in psychology, like attracts like, you know, if you're, if you're put, if you're in a bad mood and you're not taking care of that and you're not tending to yourself. And so you you spiral down into negativity or bad habits or what have you self-destruction, then what do you think you're going to start being interested in? You're going to be interested in things that reflect your own mind. So I guess what this leads into next is kind of a more archaic discussion, <laughs> um, which is this idea of the holy guardian angel, because let's get into it. I found myself reading about it, reading up on it. There's a book on archive.org. Uh, it's really kind of the only place you can realistically find it called The Holy Guardian Angel by Nephilim Press. And it's such a great book. And I don't know why these publishers do this. They try to make it. I think they literally do this so that people keep the buzz going about themselves. But anyway, uh, check it out from a library. Don't. Um, don't buy it. I mean, unless you really, unless money really is no object for you. Um, but anyway, it's all about the Holy Guardian Angel. And one of the spirits who I was not tending to and engaging with enough was my Holy Guardian Angel. But more so, I've been leaning on him more uh, since I've been working with this new class of spirits, because that's what you're supposed to do. But I realized that the reason I've been called to working with these Olympian spirits, which by the way, really easy to work with, um, kind of scary easy, especially, you know, from some, from somebody who's like spent all this time investing in Enochian and then it's like, what you like make a seal and then you pray and you just keep repeating the prayer and that's it. <laughs> wow. Talk about a different kind of overhead, right? Maybe it was easier because I had already done Enochian and I had all the tools and all that. So there was a, I gave them a landing pad or a, you know, I gave them a tarmac. So anyway, I've been interested in working with these spirits because number one, they're mentioned directly and they actually come through as part of the um Enochian transmission to John D and Edward Kelly uh specifically the solar spirit oak OCH and very helpful very very much about embodied wisdom by the way so even though the author has since proved to be somewhat problematic the theory of the body keeps the score, whether or not that's um, a, a mental, physiological feedback loop, or whether or not that's, you know, something that you, that, you know, the, orig the theory sometimes is said, well, body is, uh, trauma is stored in the body doubtful. I mean, I mean, that, that phrase is, is problematic, but the feedback loop, using that as shorthand for a feedback loop, I think is great. And I think that's important. Um, so sometimes I get on the, on a tangent and I forget where I'm going, but the embodied wisdom is something that they've been emphasizing to me. And they've been talking about that in terms of wisdom, uh, it, almost that the, the wisdom of your whole energy system, whether or not it's something you're able to verbalize and pass on orally or, or verbally or, you know, in the written form or what have you, that's less important than this whole system getting cleared up. So number one, that's pretty cool in, in and of itself. Um, but number two, the reason I've been working with them is I've been working to use Enochian and the spirit systems that I've been working with, including now uh, the, um, well, including Buddhism to start Enochian, but as well as the Arbitel, 
now, which I find great, you know, I'll probably keep coming back to it. Um, but also there's another angel called uh, Salamian, make your jokes about going to the deli. Um, but very interesting and powerful angel. And that sort of led me to do the call to the aethers that I posted today. So where am I going with all of this? So the angels and Buddhist deities who I am working with right now, I am seeking out partly to just cover absolutely all the bases I can think of as far as Enochian goes, presenting all the different ways to think about it, including using another system, the Arbitel, that Enochian is not part of, but there's clearly like overlap, right? And the Arbitel was published six years before John D. Edward Kelly started working the Enochian system. So in, in one sense, you know, part of that small splinter of the Enochian system comes out of the Arbitel. But I'm trying to get as much of that done and ready. And Salamion, by the way, appears in all these other grimoires of the time. And I did not find uh, him difficult to call at all. I basically, if you don't know, by the way, how to like call something up because it's not there, usually do something like, and this is something I learned from Jason Louvre, um, and I'm just going to give a condensed version because I know he sells uh, classes. And he, but he said, he basically talk, tax on Lieber Israfel, which is, you know, well known. But if you read that, that text, it's very much a lot of saying the names of and qualities and attributes of such and such a deity and using that to try to invoke them so that they like come into you and you can get more and more specific innovate folks you know do this get more specific what is it you want are you asking for something specific for yourself anyway i could go on and on um but usually i ask for when i was doing that i, I, I haven't done it in a, in a few years but i would ask them to come in and then you know using myself as a vessel because I like channeling it seemed to be okay at it um getting like this deity's wisdom basically spoken to me etc and also sometimes challenging me in the moment or what have you but so anyway I did that with this deity Salamion and or this not deity this angel <laughs> very powerful one though um, we'll say seven out of 10, <laughs> you know, a, but very, very, very strong in terms of entities I've worked with. So anyway, um, he basically came down in this vertical light through my crown chakra. My crown chakra was really activated today and I will get to the point, to a point about this, but the, what I, what he basically said is, or the, the, he made me basically create a sigil and you can try this on your own, but basically it's like this beam of light going down through hitting the heart. And then imagine that sort of being reflected out and working through the whole subtle body. I found that helpful. So at any rate, so I'm working on integrating these angels, um, and having, covering as much as I can in terms of, I, I know that Enochian is very strong. I know that it's very much encompassing of a lot. And so we're talking planetary, elemental, and zodiacal in nature. And that's basically everything, if you think about it, you know, all the way to the farthest macrocosm with the zodiacal and the microcosm with the elemental in terms of just thinking that through now so that's pretty cool but what are we using this for and that's where the buddhism comes in so buddhism always talks about this non-dual state realizing that everything is basically has this buddha nature this empty this empty clear quality to it basically 
consciousness does. And every sentient being has this. And if I, you take this a step further and say the entire universe is conscious, then you get this idea that I, I extrapolate slightly or emerge or however you want to put it. I syncretize. Um, then you get this idea that the universe is conscious and, you know, that's God. But the trouble is getting to that is kind of a pain in the neck, right? I mean, year and a half working on Holy Guardian Angel work, um, all of that. That's a lot. And without getting too into it, I want an easier way. I want an easier way, or I want to leave behind to the world an easier way to get in touch and develop. No matter where you are on the spiritual path, that's what I'm looking for, right? Wouldn't it be nice? And so, because there's so much overhead in, under, in understanding in understanding Enochian and Buddhism, for that matter, right? Even Zen Buddhism, it's like, there's still, in order to understand the mind, I mean, do we all have to be like me and go out and get psychology degrees? Not everybody has time for that, or even an inclination. But they still want the, the fruits of the spirit, as they should. It's their birthright. So anyway, that's where the mandala is. So getting to what I found as an obstacle that, I'm, that I sort of had a minor insight today, which was this issue about like getting depressed, getting down, getting sad. It's weird getting to that point, not just like from, okay, you know, I got bipolar and this and that. Every time that happens, it's like, why? I know this, I have this other thing. I have this entire embodied feeling and yet it still gets depressed. So number one, eat your vegetables, you know, dip, take your meds, blah, 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 blah. But what I found, what I realized was that there's, and this is something that my friend Cody P, I talk about him from time to time. He has this site called unslop.com, unslop, U-N-S-L-O-P.com. It's pretty cool. But he mentioned this, well, I'll boil it down, basically. What he was saying reminded me of this painting of the, what you see in Buddhism of the rainbow body. And it was this particular one, and it was like, the, it's hard to describe because it's basically showing you a body that isn't there, that is sort of instead showing you this miraculous transformation of somebody either at the moment of death, or if you want to think, you know, <coughs> less miraculously, just have an easier way to conceptualize it, the energy system that somebody has. So it was made of four circles, one kind of like here on earth, another two, which was sort of like the sense I got of the person and their identity. And the third one was kind of up here. It was like their heart. And all of those lower three ones were all just this beautiful rainbow, hence the name rainbow body, beautiful colors of the rainbow, uh, you know, forming this basically a pinwheel kind of looking thing in terms of the stripes coming out. But the fourth one was up here and that was this black circle, you know, all of them sort of had these wavy lines coming through them, but this was a black circle with golden lines. And one of the things that I'll say is that if you go from like holy guardian and angel work to supernal work, it's all important. Don't get me wrong. Like anything you do as far as developing yourself spiritually is important and should be done. But when you are deciding to take like a stepwise approach, or if you just have insights like that, let's just put it that way. If you have insights that take you from really focused heart work, stuff like that into how can I get all of this nature of reality and focus it in such a way that people can get it, then you have to, first of all, experience that higher level, right? But second of all, you have to like, have that sort of push and pull. And I am coming to the point. 
between the two, between mundane reality and between these insights. So coming to the point, this has been happening off and on, and you sort of, as well, after a while, you kind of get used to it. But I think that really understanding in a wise and embodied way, one might even dare say a crowned way, <laughs> up here, right? You realize that I came back to this point, which is like, you got these spiritual insights, you've got, you know, this things that go on in your life that, you know, can feel like crushing at the last, it's like, and, you know, you kind of want to like, you know, you, the temptation is to do something foolish and say, ah, you know, I'm mad at you, spirit, God, whatever, my low, my own mo lower mind and lower self, you know, what have you. But that's not productive, right? That's not getting you anywhere. That's old thinking. You're already past that. So what I realized is what I needed to know is why. Why does this keep happening, right? And not in the sense of, well, that's just life. Need a little bit more. And I realized that the way to think about this is to think about those golden strands that you that I saw in this, and I'll find a picture of it, and I'll I'm sure it's public domain, or if not. <laughs> but I realized that those golden strands, you know, or golden waves in that upper circle around the head, they were like veins or like blood vessels. And the thing that we know about blood, or the blood in the blood vessels, how about that? But it's golden, you know, it's golden and it's spiritual, it's wonderful. And I realized about it is that blood vessels expand and contract. They have to, right? And why is that? Because we're all on this flow of time, right? And each one of them needs to be honored. And, you know, obviously you can't just shut those down because this is the thing that we're going for. We're going for this golden feeling. We're going for this golden feeling, though, within this embodied space. Why? Because we care about ourselves and other people. That's it. That's love. That's why these things are together. And as we go through life, sometimes it's going to seem like, you know, the black part is like squeezing out the gold, the spiritual gold that we have. And other times it's going to feel like, oh, it's all just this wonderful gold and blah, blah, blah. But either one of those uh, is not going to be okay. Why? Because we know that other people suffer. If we're, if we're in ec ecstasy, we still know other people suffer. But if we're down in the dumps, we also know that that's just calling on us to honor a different part of ourselves. That's it. And so the compassion then needs to either turn inward or turn towards our life or maybe towards somebody else who we're devoted to and has a lot of problems. That's it, you know, set the gold aside, focus on the things so that we can actually, we can t make space, make literal space for those blood vessels, as it were, to expand again. So at about 24 minutes here, uh, let me know if you have specific questions about anything, by the way, I always look forward to answering them. And I am maybe not today, just because my head is kind of hurting, but I am on my way to um, ramping up towards not only the mandala once again, but also the um, a Jebafal 2.0, which I'm looking forward to now. I feel like, you know, especially with the operation that I'm gonna be, the continued operation this calendar week. <laughs> it's not a Sunday to Saturday. I, I started on Thursday, so. I have tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tomorrow is Monday for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to wrapping up the work with the Arbitel uh, spirits. And what I'm finding with them in particular is they, they are like underneath, quote unquote, the Enochian angels, but they're more like, if you think of like any given system as a plane, another spirit 
or spiritual plane is coming like coming in like this or maybe coming in down like this right from another literally another angle <laughs> um and use whatever orthography you can get n-dimensional stuff into dimensions that we can't see just like spirit itself is generally <laughs> a, it's not just one dimension you can't see it's a bunch of dimensions you can't see very highly populated you think earth has a lot of people wait till you get the spirit so but anyway i'm specifically thinking that they will be really good in terms of bringing in stuff a little bit closer quote unquote to earth and a lot of sp spirits that um, if you were to like do a hierarchy just for whatever reason the Enochian entities don't quite pull in as much but they do they will answer to the Enochian entities but it's like their own thing for lack of a better term and I'll just keep doing this so that's about it so anyway thank you so much for watching I'm uh very grateful to you all for uh for for your interest and I'm I'm really hope mainly that I'm helpful in in whatever way because I think if you if you don't understand spirituality in the way that I do um by the way I'm going to link a video to uh Foolish Fish I started watching he works with entities that I don't and okay but he's got a pretty good outlook generally from the three videos that I've seen I I like his outlook uh as a magician I respect him uh so I'm going to link a video just to wrap this up quickly. So, you know, roughly within 27 minutes uh, where he talks about why go, why work with spirits? Why not just work with God? And uh, there was, this is a question that I got from somebody over and over and over again. And I kept on trying different ways to do that, but I thought he provided a really good answer. So pressure's off me. Um, pressure's never off me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, love to you all. Thank you again for your interest. And again, if there's anything you're inter you would like me to do a video on, just let me know. And time permitting and um, knowledge permitting, frankly, if I don't know or understand, then I will let you know. Um, or I will try to come to that before I do a video. So anyway, Love to you all, absolutely every one of you. Um, those of you who have met me, those of you who have contacted me separately or not, love to you all, okay? And I really mean that. So thank you so much and just enjoy uh, not just the rest of your day, but each moment. How about that? All right.